What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out channel. It's another episode of the Brothers Geeking Out. Oh, we've got a busy one. We've got a busy one today. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, but just before I start with anything, guys, check the description. If you don't want to hear me and Kibs talk about our life and real world issues and all that sort of stuff, if you want to, like, you know, we want to keep the main core of this, of what we do is geek out, right, with the whole mm-hmm. coach stuff, movies and comic books. So check the description. I always put the timestamp. And I would always put, you know, geek, like geek out starts from here. That would be the first thing you see on the timestamp. So you can skip all this nonsense uh, and, and get straight to the to the news, that which is the core aspect of this, of this. I was going to say show. I don't know if this is a show, but geek out session. It's a show, um, it's a show. It's a show. It's weird to say everyone the show. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, but if you want to hear us talk about what's been going on with us, what's been going on in the world and our thoughts, then we'll give you our thoughts. I mean, we're not experts. And when we, especially when we talk about political stuff and the stuff that's going on, it's just our view, our opinions based on what we've seen, the intel that we've taken on and how we feel about it. But we're not, I have to put this out there, we are not experts. We don't research into the political stuff to really give history. And again, I always say this, whatever the situation is, and we'll talk about some stuff today based on what's going on do your own research and everyone has an entitled to believe whatever they believe even if someone says like you know like you shouldn't believe in that or whatever it is whatever you but you read as long as you read both sides or listen to both sides and then you made up your mind then so be it that's on you uh, and that's the same thing with us you know what i mean mm-hmm. there could be biases involved there could be <clears throat> Uh, many other aspects involved you you got to support a side because of work and whatnot whatever it is so be it so be it. There's no judgment. She's going to give you my thoughts on things. Uh, if I say anything that might be judgmental, I apologize. Um, mm. But again, this, this is not our core thing. We are not <laughs> political journals or any of that sort of stuff. But I want to throw that out there before we start. I do check the timestamp. Skip to the news, the pop culture news if you want. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, Chick Kibbs, how you doing, bro? I know you've had a busy week uh, and stuff like that. What's been going on with you, bro? Yes, it's been it's been absolutely busy, bro. Uh, not just just life in general. Most of the household is sick, uh, so we're just trying to get past this bug. Uh, but then you know the geeky stuff. We got to do some really interesting stuff, stuff that we haven't done before on the channel, uh, and and happy to get the opportunity to do things like that as well. So uh, first things first, make sure you go check out our X channel which is formerly known as twitter we've got a giveaway for mortal kombat legends cage match uh we'll get onto more details on how that went as well how the movie is and the interviews we did with jeremy and rick uh the director and the writer and producer which was absolutely awesome and then yesterday i got to do something really cool man i was nervous about it but it was our first proper interview with film and audio and uh with uh jeff Rowe, the director of teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem which went really well uh i'm super excited about just that opportunity bro and then today marks the one year uh mark of uh me meeting the rock bro oh damn damn yeah one that's year, today right? yeah it's so quick yeah Time goes exactly so quick. yeah oh my god that's amazing yeah so. I mean, well look some amazing stuff and we're gonna get into it. i can't wait to to hear how the experience was. I know you were nervous yesterday. You were message us and messaging us about it, but yeah. I knew you'd do fine. You're good at this sort of stuff. And it's just, you know, it's something new. And it's great to see the success of what we're doing just kind of lead into that. Because if there was no success, we wouldn't get those things. So looking forward to getting into that more. And it's great that, uh, damn, one year with The Rock. That means Black Adam came out last year. Crazy. Man. Mm-hmm. It's been one year since we've been in Dubai. We celebrated, not celebrated, but it was our one year anniversary last Saturday. Uh, yeah, that we moved to Dubai. That like, time goes so quick; it's unbelievable, man. It's such a crazy thing. At this age, uh, like the yeah, it's, it's it goes by way too quick, bro. Way too quick. So yeah, yeah, it's this... an amazing journey. Definitely an amazing journey. Yeah, I was gonna say this week, like at the gym, like <laughs> I mean, it's been a great week at training. To be honest, getting straight back into it after last week mm. I was off because I didn't have the car. Anyway, the coaches and everyone found out that I was thirty eight. And they couldn't believe it. And, you know, it gave me a boost of energy. As in, like, we're doing wrestling class. I was sparring one of the coaches. And he was like, oh, young man, young man. I'm like, oh, 
And he goes, how old are you, brother? I said, 38. And they couldn't believe it. Like, he told the other coach, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, hey, he's fucking 38. Like, they were just going on. And it gave me a boost of energy. And they were like, brother, you look so young. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Alhamdulillah, man. I look young, but my body does not feel young. Tomorrow, my yeah. neck, my back, my shoulder, everything's going to hurt. Uh, but I got a lot of stripes, man. And it felt good. Really, it gave me a boost of energy because I'm keeping, I'm trying my best to keep up with these youngsters. Like, I have yeah. to train extra to try and keep up with these youngsters. Like, when the class, like, bro, the class is from six to seven. I have to yeah. go in at 5.15 and do a 45-minute warm-up <laughs> because mm. my busted-ass body. And then after the class, to keep up with the students, I'm doing a conditioning. I'm on the air dying and I'm doing all this conditioning work or whatnot, just keep my cardio up. These brothers come in at 6 o'clock, do the class and get the hell out, right? They're good. They go home, they recover. No need for warm-up, none of that sort of stuff, right? And I'm just like, I have to do all this additional stuff to, to warm up. I am started a cold plunge that I've been doing. I need to do that now. Um, so many things. I have to train harder to keep up with with the youngsters. But it's it's great, bro, to know that you know, like you know, I'm getting stripes for being the older guy there and the smallest guy there, which is crazy. Yeah. And then uh, even with Muay Thai yesterday, you know, we were doing Muay Thai sparring, and and the coach was just giving me stripes on on my movement and whatnot. And I felt great as well. You know, normally striking's always a bit harder just because of you know bigger dude hits you. It's it's it, it, it fucking hurts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yesterday I was I was <clears throat> yesterday was a good day of sparring. I don't know what it was, but what happened was um first of all, like the sun was shining in, right? This was my first yeah. thing that was going. Sun was shining in while I was sparring this dude. And I remember that book, the book of book of five, like uh, the book of five rings. Um and uh, Miyamoto Musashi was talking about some of the strategies that he would use. So he would always make sure his opponent is facing the sun. So he'd be blinded by the sun. But as I was sparring and dancing around and whatnot, I was blinded by the sun. So like instinctively, the strategy was like, I'll just circle around and let him go in the sun and stuff like that, you know? And every time I found myself circling back around to the sun, I'll just dance around, keep my distance and then circle back around. So my opponent's facing the sun. Uh, and yeah, I just yeah. had a great movement. Like some of these big guys were trying to clip me with wild hooks and I just lean back like I was Muhammad Ali or something. It, I just felt great. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's good to know that I'm still being able to like, with the striking, I'm able to uh, kind of hold my own against the bigger guys. Don't get me wrong. If they went crazy and started throwing big bombs, it'll be all hurt. But just to know I'm able to evade and whatnot, which is has been good. So this week, let's like say, good. man, it's been, it's, I've, I've had a good week of training. I got to go jujitsu tonight. And then that's my hmm. last day of hard training. Tomorrow we back, we work out from home. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a crazy week. It's been a good week. It's been an emotional week. We're gonna get into it. I want to get into it. I personally have some things to say about what's been going on in the world and whatnot. Just my thoughts. But yeah, other than that, man, you know, another week in Dubai, UFC, Abu Dhabi this weekend. I can't wait. Me and K West will talk about. It. Do check out Fight Talk. Uh, we'll put our fight predictions up. Obviously, after the fights, we'll give our thoughts on it. I'm super excited about that card. I wish I got tickets, but boy, it's expensive, man. The brothers are <laughs> buying them up one time. But um, yeah, now other than that, man, just, you know, work's been busy, life's been busy, and just, just trying to keep up, keep keep busy, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's the best thing we can do uh, is, is try and keep occupied and, and, and keep busy. Uh, I know what it's like when you... I think I know we, we, we kind of want to do as much as we can so it's always uh always good to see us being as busy as possible to be honest uh because some people just don't know what they're doing and what how they want to do things so it's it's great to see that we're doing as much as we can uh, I'm, I'm i'm happy to see the progress bro uh but you know your daily daily week daily struggle you get through you know i had a rough two nights uh, my mental health hasn't been great recently because i'm just trying to I need to be more grateful for being here and getting to do some of the things that I do generally on an everyday basis. Uh, some madness happened at, week, at work last week and it just kind of really threw my headspace off. And yeah, I'm, I'm, it's really important that you value, value what you do, value who you are. Uh, I think the more I've been doing that, the more opportunities that I've come through is because I'm valuing what I do and we love what we do. Somebody said the other day was like, there's a movie coming out. Uh, well, it's currently in crowdfunding at the moment now. I know they're going to launch it next week uh, called Punchbag, which is uh, director Rob I uh, Arlen and uh, M Michael Angie. Uh, 
uh, called Punchbag, uh, which was inspired by the podcast, which is amazing, bro. To to, to think they, they've got a short film that they want to bring out and it's inspired by a po- podcast episode that me and Michael did. And he talked about mental health and boxing and the director was like, I want to make this into a film. Same person said, you know, it's inspiring to see what you guys do because you're not in it for what most people are. You're, you're true fans and you, and you basically love what you do and it shows what you do uh, and you continue to be consistent. And I think that's important. Stop looking at, you know, what most people don't show on social media is that everything's all hunky-dory. It's not. Even though all these great opportunities are coming, I'm still struggling. Uh, and people need to know that it's okay not to be okay, I suppose, but it's how you deal with it uh, mm. and making sure you speak to people. And yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. So keep moving forward guys. And uh, yeah, make sure you enter that Twitter competition for Mortal Kombat Legends cage match. It's it's on X. It's on X. It sounds like a Brussi website now. I hate Brussi saying website. that. <laughs> X. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, definitely guys uh, just keep pushing forward. You know, before you know it, amazing things will happen. Uh, we're true testament of that. You know what I mean? True testament of that. I've had some great opportunities. We've had some great opportunities. We still are getting loads more. Uh, and you will get that as well. I'm telling you guys, hard work pays off. It does pay off. Yes, there's going to be struggle. There's going to be mental battles. But honestly, you keep at what you're doing. And if it's something that you absolutely adore and love, you're going to smash it. Uh, other things as well there's some new stuff happening the rebranding of the Brothers Geek Out podcast is happening very soon uh, Dale shout outs to you for working on the intro and somebody else is going to do a little new intro video for us as well so there's loads of things happening guys keep an eye on the page you've got the gaming channel as well plug 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 and if you guys got any questions remember uh, hit us up on social media uh, I'm always happy to message back and you know even if it's a conversation we're happy to jump on it, you know what I mean? So, nothing but love, guys. Nothing but love. Nothing and, but love, yeah. Yeah, let's go, bro. Let's continue, bro. Yeah, no, awesome. Well, look, yeah, for, for real shout-outs to everyone, and I, I 100% agree. Uh, all these good things are happening because of our consistency and our willingness <clears throat> to just do it and just keep at it, regardless of the numbers, regardless of anything and whatnot. And, yeah, and, I, and I think, like, with this podcast, like, you can – see that we just press record and just talk and whatever the fuck happens happens and however we yeah. talk we talk like i always said this and i and i've seen this that like you're good at the interview stuff like what you what we're going to talk about later what you did you're good at that i'm not i'm i i'm much better i think you're all right though but because you, you can have a conversation with people i think what you do with slick is is, is that but it's actually taking it to the next level and you're you know slick so you can have a natural conversation is how do you have that? And that's what I was suffering yesterday. And luckily I did a couple of push-ups. like they were running late. I did a couple of push-ups, and I meditated and working on my uh, breathing box technique. So just to calm my anxiety down and, and, and the stress levels down and just say like, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? Things are going to happen. Just try and be as natural as you can. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. No, if you've done well. And I mean, look, uh, from my perspective, like I I can have conversations. If I have a long form platform to express myself, then I can have conversations. If it's very short and you've got to think a question, it's difficult for me. Uh, So, you know, like, you know, again, I've always mentioned him. Joe Rogan's been the guy who I've like kind of like, when I say wanted to do a podcast, like it's kind of like influenced by him. He just has a conversation. Mm. Now, of course, he does a bit of research. He's very smart. He doesn't think he is, but he's very smart. He understands a lot of things. And, you know, if he has a guest on, he'll do a little bit of research, be it read their book, read it, watch a documentary, all that sort of stuff, but he knows mm. what to talk about. But end of the day, every single person he speaks to, be it a scientist or a comedian, he is having a conversation. And I love that. And, and that's what I would love yeah. to do. It's all a conversation. And the conversation could be about specific topics, then go off topic, then come back and crack jokes. That's why he's the best. And that's why I like doing this podcast and the talk with Slick because it's that. And any guests that I've ever spoken to, it's a conversation. It's never in. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, bro, let's talk, man. Wherever the fuck the conversation goes, let's go. And I'm going to talk the way I talk uh, and whatnot. Mm. But no, you're, listen, end of the day, it's about acknowledging um, what your strengths and weaknesses are and work towards your strengths and try and work on your weaknesses. But sometimes I feel like, 
some week, like not everyone is the same. So sometimes your weakness is just going to be your weakness. And now you can try and find ways to improve them and all that sort of stuff. And you're always supposed to, you're supposed to find ways to challenge them, uh, which is always supposed to. But end of the day, like it's still going to be a weakness, right? And mm. you just focus on, on, on the strengths and whatnot. Um, and, and, and you, we're a team, you're good at that shit. Go do that. And I'm good at, you know, talking about the MMA and stuff with slick. I'm going to do that stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, a, it's and listen, we are, like I said, it's it's um, consistency is what got us here, man. You know, our video editing, not to be bad, like to, on us, but we don't edit videos or whatnot. We don't have time. I would love to. I know you're good right. at that shit, but we just don't have the time to put these amazing yeah. edits together and cut clips and whatnot. I don't have the time for it. So I, I love, I just love this whole natural form of recording. Let's just fucking talk and see where the hell goes. And you know what? Our subscribers have gone up. I know it's been slowed down a little bit on YouTube, but I'm sure on all the other platforms, I don't follow them, but you have the numbers. They've gone up a little bit here and there. So we're just growing slowly, slowly by doing what we do. And um, yeah, I fucking love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, cool. Well, look, let's get into it because we've got a lot to discuss, right? Yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. And go for it. You mentioned being grateful for what we have. And this kind of relates straight to that because I'm going to start talking about the situation in, in Palestine at the moment. Right? Mm. So again, guys, check the timeline. If you want to skip all this, skip it. And But I want to start off by saying this, bro. Like, I, I, you know, this shit has been bugging me, bugging me since it's all been going down. Worse than ever. And first of all, I, we've said this so many times, right? And we always against anyone innocent who dies, right? Mm -hmm child, woman, man, non-combative, anyone innocent is condemned from any side, from anyone in the world, bro. I'm not just this situation, but in the world, it's a horrible thing when someone... Yeah. Dies. What my... What I've been, been bugged with this week, man, again, it's the same shit. And it's on my Instagram and whatnot, and I have to be careful because I'm a part of, I'm a part of it. I work mm. for the mainstream media, but the bias of the one-sided mainstream media on the situation in Palestine is disgusting and when i mean disgusting it, 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 it they they're dictating a narrative that is leading to genocide i feel like we're witnessing mm -hmm. no. a genocide in our time bro and it's it's killing yeah. me inside that the mainstream media is pushing this and they actually pull it in as like it's real news it's like no it's you are dictating the narrative and making it okay for a genocide to happen in Palestine and you have blood on your hands, but they will never see that because they have agendas. The world has agendas. Politi politicians and corporations have agendas and you're pushing it, but you're pushing a genocide. It's horrible. It makes me sick. I'm so sad about it. I've posted a few things on my web, on, on my Instagram. I'm Listen, I am no influencer. I don't have that many followers or whatnot, man. But if I feel heartbroken not to post something that I think is bullshit or just people should be aware no. of. You know what I mean? Because I don't think I can make an influence on what people say and whatnot. And again, I've done my research based on everything. And I've listened, I, I work for the mainstream media. So I see the mainstream media news. And also I'm listening to podcasts and seeing other things from the other side and whatnot. And I choose to believe because I, everyone knows the mainstream media is lying. They've done this in the past for years, even with COVID most recently. And now we're seeing it again. And it's all dictating and, and making it okay to commit genocide on the Palestinian people. And it breaks my heart that one, people actually believe it. I, I don't get it. Like I think there's a couple of different people out there. Some people who genuinely believe it, right? And if they do, then so be it. You've done your research, that's what you believe. Maybe you're defending your country, whatever it is. All right, cool. I think there's a lot of people who have to give the narrative and, and give the face fake news and misinformation and propaganda about against Palestine because it's your job and you feel like you're gonna get you're gonna get your fired and all that sort of stuff. And that is happening as well, which is horrible. Bad people are getting fired because they pro-Palestine or, or supporting uh, Palestine and whatnot, right? Uh, and then there's a whole narrative like if you support Palestine, you're supporting terrorists, which is bullshit. People believe all this sort of shit, right? And then I think there's other people, the other people who just who who are supporting Palestine, but not just Palestine because they're Muslim or whatnot. No, we're supporting against genocide. And listen, if you think if you think that supporting Palestine means that you're supporting terrorism, I and mean, that's what the mainstream media and all those right yeah. people are, are saying and pushing out there, and a lot of people are believing it, and they keep 
pushing that narrative. That means you think Muhammad Ali <laughs> is a terrorist. You think Nelson Mandela who's a ter- is a terrorist, who actually was on the terrorist list up to 2008 because he was against apartheid in South Africa. My guy knows everything about an apartheid state, which is what's happening in, in uh, Palestine. You're saying that Mahatma Gandhi is a terrorist. You're saying that Malcolm X is a terrorist, which they didn't put him on the terrorist list, but he always advocated self-defense, never to attack anyone. And then you're putting someone like Albert Einstein as a terrorist because he even spoke up for Palestinians back then. And this is a Nobel Prize winning scientific and he was Jewish as well. So you're saying they're all terrorists just because they are sticking up for what's right. And what's right is the the, uh, the the against the genocide and occupation of the Palestinian people. I mean, bro, listen, well, Hamas, this was disgusting, fucking disgusting. If a terrorist does that, they're fucking disgusting. Do you do it? Cool. Go kill the terrorists. No, what they're doing is blowing the shit out of the whole of the Palestinians. Again, throwing the propaganda saying, oh, Hamas has a base in a hospital. Hamas has a base in a school. Da, 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 da. Hamas tie babies on their chest to say, oh, they're using children as human fucking shields, which is bullshit propaganda that they're throwing out. You really think every Hamas guy, you know, you know the baby thing you wear to put your baby in? You really think Hamas is just walking around with babies in there? But this is a fucking clip from South Park. Do you remember the South Park, the movie at the end when they were going to war and they tied black people to the, to the tanks and shit like that? That's a fucking clip from that. That, that they've stolen and they've shut shut that shit uh, put that shit propaganda out there and people actually believe it all the children that have all died in gaza people actually believe that every single one of them was a human shield to hamas i can't believe they believe that shit right and fucking so that's why people put uh putting that narrative out there and we're against going, yeah sorry i'm going into it man <laughs> I'm against uh, uh, the killing of innocent people, the occupation of them people. And also, I'm against taking their land. So, okay, you blow up everyone, right? You blow them all up. Oh, it was Hamas's fault. We killed them. They used everyone. Okay, cool. So then what? You just steal their land? You're like, ah, they're dead anyway. I'm just going to take the land. Like, I'm against all of that shit, man. I can't believe a witness in a genocide and the fake news. I just posted some shit on my Instagram about the hospital that got blown up and 500 people died in Palestine. 500 It's a Christian hospital as well. Again, I, I'm putting this out there. This is not a religious thing, right? Because no. two Jewish brothers and sisters are out there protesting again as well. And they're hurting because these people are using their name, you know, the, their, their faith, the Jewish religion to create genocide. They, they feel horrible about it, right? It's disgusting. No, of course they do. And then they do. Th- this this whole propaganda about the fucking, uh, the, the, the hospital that was just blown up. Can you believe it? Wait, first of all, they done propaganda saying that for, the, the Hamas beheaded and decapitated 40 babies in Israel, which is horrible. Fucking mm. make me want to hurt someone, uh, Hamas, for that. I, I wouldn't want to hurt Hamas and they deserve it. But it was all fake news because first they were saying it and whatnot. Then they're like, oh, they started retracting it and all the mainstream media went out with it. And of course it makes them look horrible. And then after it's like, oh, they're retracting. Oh, there's no pictures, there's no nothing. I'm like, hold on a second. Fucking in Gaza, these people got no electricity, no water, no nothing. But they can post and give you pictures of the children that are dying there. But in Israel, where they got everything, all the technology, they can't give any pictures of the babies that died. I'm not talking about the decapitated one because that's horrible. But the mm. pictures of it, no, they, it was all lies. It was all fake news, right? There was no actual evidence, right, of that. It was, and people retracted their statements. Now we got this hospital one. Bro, you won't believe it. But Gaza's being blown up. Israel are throwing rockets and whatnot. And then now there's all this propaganda about, oh, again, New York Times is saying it was an explosion. Fucking, okay, explosion. Yeah, in, in, while they're getting bombed, it's an explosion. You're not, it, it's not an, a missile coming from the people that are blowing them up. Okay, an explosion. CNN mm. are like, oh, there's it, there's a possibility that it could be Hamas, that they their, their missile miss directed and hit a fucking hit the hospital are you fucking kidding me Hamas just threw 650 missiles over to Israel how come one of them didn't fucking miss fire and blow up a church like I cannot believe the propaganda that people that they're throwing out there people believe it. like I said the people who are who are fucking um uh pushing that narrative cool they have an agenda they have an agenda of genocide that's on them that's cool that's the life they want to live that's not a problem but the main and again the mainstream is part of that as well but the general people who actually think that that's real and follow that is is disgusting man we're actually witnessing a genocide we're letting that happen uh as as human beings and and people who believe it 
again, the, 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 a genocide will happen. You know what? And, you, and the crazy heartbreaking thing is once it happens, it's just going to be a part of history and everyone's going to move on and live their lives, which is going to be horrible. And it's horrible for the Palestinian people and people's families dying and all that sort of stuff. And we're going to move on. And maybe one day in history will come out. It's, like, it's all lies just to get the land because this has happened before. This has happened mm. before in history and whatnot. So we ain't learned shit. And all of this misinformation and propaganda and, and fucking uh, talking all these lies is building hate towards Muslims and whatnot. A seven or six year old Palestinian kid in America, his landlord stabbed him 26 times because of this. You hear about that? What the fuck? Mm. And this landlord used to be cool with them. But because of this news narrative, that's what they're doing. They're trying to brain, again, they're brainwashing it. Innocent people, I'm going to say they're brainwashing innocent people to make them think that the Palestinians, the Muslims, which it's not, again, it's not even a Muslim thing, but the Palestinians no. are bad people. And this guy who was cool with his landlords ended up stabbing the child 26 times and then trying to kill the mother as well. Like that was, you could say that's mm. an innocent guy who was brainwashed by the media. And this is what the media and the propaganda media does. And people just stand by it, man. And like I say, like you can you can send condolences to Israel and what Hamas did, because I would, of course I would. Mm. But why can't you do a single one towards anything that's happening in, in, in uh, Palestine? And then the, the narrative is like, oh, they started this. Like what, what last Saturday? What the fuck? This, they've been occupied since 75 fucking years ago. They ain't start shit. And they've been taking haymakers for 75 fucking years. Haymakers after haymakers. This one situation, they probably bobbed and rolled and threw a strike back. And everyone's like, Hamas started it. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, people were actually believing that that's the narrative. They actually believed that, oh, it was beautiful and paradise was there and there was fucking rainbows and butterflies. Everyone's cool. While fucking Gaza's living, people are living in an open air prison. And then Hamas out of nowhere just decided to blow everyone up and do that terrorist attack. Like, what the fuck? Like, do you really, people actually believe that they started it last week when this shit's been going on for 75 years? Man, what's the problem though? It's been that's, that's, that's the narrative, isn't it? Bro, it's on my mind constantly. And when I hear shit, when I hear some of these adults, fucking adults who are actually, who are actually like, con like, 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 uh, uh, saying that they want genocide without saying it, like saying that mm. there's no humanitarian crisis there, uh, whatever, like, oh, we didn't do this, we didn't do it. You're advocating for genocide, man, and the whole mainstream media, even BBC recently just came out and said, oh, like all these protests, they were like, oh, pro, pro Hamas protests when they were all pro Palestine uh, protests. But all these protests were like free Palestine. None of these protests were like, kill Israel, kill Jews, kill this. No, they were all just saying free Palestine. And BBC and all these mainstream medias were putting them as um, uh, uh, pro-Hamas. And BBC just came out saying, oh, we miscommunicated it. Uh, 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 now the weather, fucking idiot. But at least they take ownership of that and done that. In countries like France and whatnot, they're literally banning people to do pro-Palestine um, uh, uh, protests. And again, pro-Palestine, mm. not pro-Hamas and pro-death, because that's bad. If you was to go out and say pro-death, then you're fucked up. But if you're doing pro-Palestine, there's nothing wrong with that. In Paris and France, they're stopping people from doing that. But you could do a pro-Israel one as well. Like, all of this stuff, and I just don't understand why the world don't see it. And again, the world is divided, and there are individuals who really believe in that. Cool, that's what it shows up. But the people in the middle, and especially I'm going to call out the people who supported Ukraine and all that sort of stuff, who, are, who don't, don't dare to speak out about this because they know it's wrong, but they choose not to because their job's on the line and all that sort of stuff. I'm in that position too. I'm in that position. And I, I would never post anything about hate towards our Jewish brothers and sisters because they are, are unfortunately they're going through it with their name. And I'll never post anything hate in regards to, to, to the country of Israel because you know what? I'm sure sure there were a lot of innocent people on that side that just don't want this but again it's yeah. governments and whatnot so i will never post any of that but i will post free palestine i will post things that i think that is facts i will post when jewish brothers and spe sisters are, uh, are speaking up because that shows people that it's not a religious thing and jewish brothers and sisters are supporting palestine too and i will post some of the fake media shit because people need to understand it's propaganda propaganda is what makes people hate another group of people and make people mm. think that it's okay to kill them. It's okay to kill 2 million people and steal their land because that's propaganda that does that shit. Um, so it's fucking horrible. I'm watching a lot of shit. I, I want to stay away because my mental health has been fucked up on this too. But bro, as you said, man, our lives are good. So it's hard for me to not stay away and understand what's going on there 
and at least post about it, at least donate something, man. Because what mm. the fuck else can I do? Like, I'm, I'm living a nice life. I'll be a bitch to be like, ah, I'm, not, I'm gonna ignore that, ignore that, and just live my life and drink juice and have fun and do whatever. It's hard for me to do that. And I am doing that, I am training, I am living my life and whatnot. But it's hard for me not to li listen to the news. It's hard for me not to give my sympathies out for any innocent people dying, but mostly because of the Palestinians that are dying. And it's hard for me not to just post a little something because maybe it'll influence someone who's following me to be like, oh shit, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the Jewish brothers and sisters are speaking up for things. Oh, I didn't know that there's misinformation. So I post a little thing, but I'm very careful what I post. I will never post hate and I'll never post to towards anyone or whatnot. But I, I, bro, my job could be on the line too because I work for the mainstream as well. Right? And it's scary. But I just wanted to know that I would never, I, I condemned anyone who, who dies, but you've got to stick up for what's right as a human being. And if this wasn't Palestine, it, it could be any other country, any other people, I would stick up for them, man. I would, I would always kind of speak out for them, man. So it's been heartbreaking. I went on a fucking rant, but I think I wanted to do this. I think I wanted to express myself on this today in regards to how I feel about it, man. And mm. uh, I'm sure there's more that's going to come to me later on. I'm sure there's more that I'm going to want to speak about next week. I'm never going to give anyone history lesson of Palestine and Israel. I always say, go do your own research and go fucking make, make up your own decision or whatever you choose to believe. So I can't do that. I am not uh, an expert and all this sort of stuff, but I know for a fact that I, I, I'm sticking up for human beings. I, I will, mm. if this was happening the opposite way, we will condemn it. And we, we as, as, as Muslims will have an, a, a duty to, to condemn any of our Muslim brothers and sisters or any terrorists who claim to be Muslim. What the fuck are you doing? How dare you kill so-and-so people? Like we do that when the terrorist shit happens. So I'm doing my job as, as a human being. I'm trying to do my job as a human being, a job as a human being as to like one, caring and acknowledging it. And two, like, like I say, I'm no influencer, but one little post could maybe let people know that, oh, there is some fucking shit going on. Anyway, my no, man, done. sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. It's, it's, it's something that you passionate and wanted to share. And 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 no, like, you know, we're, we're coming from a cultural and a religious background where we don't condone none of that stuff, you know. But the problem is, is that we're going to be labelled that. We do condone. You know? we, we do. Let's, let's not. Someone might take that clip and say, this Muslim brother don't condone it. We condone <laughs> We condone No, 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 of course. Sorry. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. <laughs> But I'm just like, you know, the killing of innocent people. That's that, that that's the main part. Uh, and the way the, the the media is, people need to do their own research. I think somebody asked me the other day, how come you haven't spoke up about it and the rest of it and your platform and the rest of it? And I said, to be honest, it won't make a difference. People are going to make their own minds up. People are going to watch the mainstream and go from there. At the end of the day, my, my, my account is Kibla Ahmed. They know I'm Muslim. So I'll probably get shadow banned for that. You know what I mean? So... It doesn't bother me, but it's but it's have, both sides. I've seen you post no, some stuff though, like free palace. I have, I have, like yeah, definitely. I have, I have posted stuff because it's my duty, so people know the narrative of what's going on. Yeah, we don't want people both sides, but we're going to support Palestine because of what they've gone through the past seventy-five years. Like, this is a government shit. But the thing is, I'm going to always be labelled as that guy. You know what I mean? I'm always going to be labelled as that terrorist guy no matter what which is quite difficult to kind of you know somebody said this years ago was like every time I went to the airport I'd always get searched doesn't matter where I went bro Ibiza uh, Spain whatever I'm going to party I'm still gonna get and it's just because of my name you know what I mean and they said you shouldn't be used to that and I was like well it's the way of the world you know it's the way of the world so it, it's difficult bro it's difficult and I hate the fact you know it's heartbreaking to see the like, kids some of the stuff I see Babies. about kids, man. I look at my kids and I'm, you know, yes, I'm grateful to be here and 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 think, you know what, I'm I'm not in the mess of it all, but it still breaks my heart to know that families are suffering. There was a post somebody put up the other day about his daughter saying, Don't worry, I'll I'll be here waiting for you in heaven. And I'm like, ah. I saw that picture. I saw that picture, yeah. Horrible. It's hard, it's heartbreaking. It's yeah. heartbreaking. And but and, and it, that's again, but it, it's it's a narrative, bro, and and the world we live in, and, and you know, you know most of it, and and it's something that Tupac said the other day. I'm watching this documentary, Tupac, uh, about him and his mum, uh, and he said it. Society is laid out for us, and the way things are, and the rules and regulations are. Poor people are going to be poor, rich people are going to be rich, 
the narrative is going to be controlled by the larger people. Exactly. It's just, no, it's true. I mean, listen, when you say like what you post might not make a difference, I think that you should when you can. Again, you have to, uh, ah, this is selfish and this is wrong in some ways of saying it, but yes, you have to be careful with what you post so you don't get banned. Mm. You still have opportunities. It's fucked up. It is fucked up because I'm, I'm in that same position. But I think having a little post with a bit of fat or just respect or rest of, whatever, I think that's always gonna. That's always yeah, yeah, always, always. And that's what I'm doing. Um, bro. That's what I'm yeah, doing. It's just what, what you're saying in regards to won't make a difference. You're right in the sense that the the political, the you know, the the West, the mainstream media have made up their mind that we want genocide. We want to take mm. that land. They have made up that mind, so they're gonna do whatever they can to make that happen. They're gonna do it anyway. Right, regardless of all the protests and all that sort of stuff. Same with the Iraq war back in the days, and they were lying about weapons of mass destruction. It, it's, it's facts now that it was all lies, mm. and all the protests didn't do shit. They still went to war and made that decision. So, from that perspective, I think you're right. But from the perspective of just posting something, I think it'll be good. It is good just to kind of speak up for the people, and it could make a little difference to one person's uh, mentality. But the, they, the, the big people above, they have made up their mind, bro. And unfortunately, and as scary as it sounds, I keep saying this, I think we're witnessing a genocide. I think we are. No, we are. We are, bro. Genocide. We are. We are. We are. And it's, it's, I can't believe we're in that era. Uh, and, you know, it's horrendous, bro. It is horrendous. Uh, it's it's uh, heartbreaking to hear. And some of the stuff I've seen as well. I try and avoid it as well, bro. But how can you not when people are going through that? And when I pray, all I can pray for is them, man. I can't believe it's been going on this long. But it's governments. Governments. Governments, man. People that's that's charge. their problem. Yeah, people the people in, in charge. charge. It's their fault. It's their fault. And and nobody wants to take no responsibility for it. They just want to cause more shit, basically. 100%. 100%. It, that's what it is. Listen, they have an agenda. This agenda has been in place for 75 years. For this specific agenda, there's many agendas around the world, so, so be it, right? This specific one, and they're going to follow through with it. That's it. They're going to follow through, and that and there's, there's nothing that anyone else can do you know there's there's other governments that can jump in like the the, the middle eastern governments and so many different governments the irish respected them they've always stuck up for palestine venezuela's oh stuck up like many different governments have do south africa spoken up mm. is will they get in when i say get involved not fight but put a block and say enough enough stop like we're gonna you guys are sending military people there like the us are sending military aircraft there other governments will send their military aircraft there and say, listen, we don't want to fight, but this is wrong. And if you lot start exploding shit, then we're going to have to do it too. It's horrible. Mm. Who wants that? We don't want fucking World War Three. Are you kidding me? But it's only going to take other superpowers and other governments really to step up with, with some kind of um, uh, threat to say, like, no, no, don't take your military ships away. This is not right. We shouldn't be doing that. But that's not going to, it's not going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but... These other governments, they need to, especially the uh, the Middle Eastern ones, they need to really, really, they need to make something happen. They, they're the only ones that can. We can't. We're just general people. We can po we can protest. We can talk about this. We can post. We can condemn any actions from any sides and love everyone. But the fact is, when governments and the people in charge make up their mind, it's only up to the other side of the people that can that can. Um, uh, stop them, right? Uh, mm. and, and bring some negotiation or something. But um, oh, it's been on my mind. I, I can't stop thinking about it and I can't stop seeing it. My YouTube, my feeds is full of it. You're not fucking social media. If you're not on social media, good for you because you're away from all this shit. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because you do need to be informed. But you, the fact is, it's all over my social medias and I can't help but see mm. both sides of the story. And I can't help but click on both sides of the story because I do want to learn what someone from the other side like Israel is saying I want to hear that because I want to understand that and say like and if I agree with a certain point I could say that left like, that when they say oh we have a we Israel has uh, uh the right to defend itself I'm like against terrorists of course you do of course you do but then I don't support the right of bombing innocent children and, and innocent people you know what I mean so there's some things I can agree with but there's some things that I I the most things I can't but I like to listen to the other side to see what am I missing yeah but then when yeah. I hear the propaganda and all the lies and I just hear the blatant hate and calling these people rats or inhumans and they deserve to all die, that stuff, 
oh, I can't believe people say that about, about other human beings. Where is the humanity in people? But that's again, that's not the innocent, be it innocent Israeli, that's not the innocent Jewish brother or sister or Muslim mm. or whatever it is. That's just leaders who have an who have an agenda um uh, to make this happen so you know they got these plans to rule the world resources whatever the fuck it is they're going to use mainstream propaganda all that stuff to make it happen so it helps them justify what they do but can't sit it's hard for me to sit back and just let it and just not say nothing um anyway no, of course it is, bro. it's a hard one definitely a hard one hard uh one. but if anybody wants to talk about it and you know go from there you're more than welcome as i said drop a message comment away uh happy to conversate with you you know what i mean that's the main thing i think people need to talk about it more i think people need to express their thoughts as well and, and what, how they're feeling but know know what's going on know what's going on know what's going on i know we have our everyday lives to to get through but you know can't believe we're we're, we're going through this again it's it's heartbreaking 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 oh. very heartbreaking may allah uh, look after all the innocent people uh, I'm not mm. gonna pull it on the side, but me I'll have to just give guidance on that. All right, let's let's move on. I I spent 30 minutes talking about that. I wanted to get that off my chest. Let's get into uh some some more news. Unfortunately, I got another news which is not this is sad news, but um we can celebrate this. Um, Phyllis Coates, uh, f- um, first in first in screen Lois Lane, uh, passed away at the age of 96. She mm. started with George Reeves as the first Superman feature film. Uh, she parted away at 96. <clears throat> first Lois Lane, iconic Superman uh, and whatnot. And she lived up to 96. What a beautiful age. And when I say beautiful age, I mean, you know, that, that's a great age to, to, to leave a legacy behind. Of course it is, bro. And of course it is. Your life. So, you know, uh, condolence to her and her, uh, her, her family. Uh, may she rest in peace and, and she's got that legacy regardless of what your legacy is and if you're super famous or whatnot, you, she's got that legacy of being the first on-screen Lois Lane that's a legacy in itself whether I will yeah. remember her next week or if I even know who her name was I do now and I pull it on this podcast so you know it's there you know what I mean um, so so respect to her and condolences to the family no definitely definitely man amazing legacy to leave behind man amazing cool all right well let's talk about some of the stuff that you've been up to bro like you had the we watched the more you watch the Mortal Kombat uh Johnny Cage thing and I'm actually currently watching it I I'm enjoying it so far it's easy to watch it's reminding me of Vice City especially the animation and whatnot but you had the opportunity to interview the the director for that how did that go so it was actually the you know what I've, I think I've made a mistake I'm, I'm just clocked clocked on to what I've done uh anyway uh, my apologies. I'll change that on my next post about the movies and stuff as well. So it was producer Rick Morales and uh, Jeremy Adams, who's uh, the screenwriter. So those are the two I interviewed, uh, which is out to, I think, came out yesterday, guys. So Mortal Kombat Legends uh, Cage Match came out yesterday. And uh, I had the opportunity to speak to them early last, uh, late last week, which was absolutely amazing. Uh Spoke to Jeremy Adams first. Now, I'm going to be uh, absolutely honest. Uh, the the recording and the audio came out so bad on the first interview, which is such a shame because if I had the control over recording it, then I know I would have recorded it properly. But the connection was quite bad and it, it it's, it's not something I can share. So, But Jeremy Adams was absolutely amazing, bro. He's such an awesome uh a screenwriter but he writes for comics for dc comics as well he's recently got his new flash run out but you know the first thing that came to my head was you know the elements like first thing i told him was you know i had super fun with cage match because it's retro it came from the it's based in the 80s it's the movies that we love and as soon as i told him that it gave me big trouble in little china vibes he proper geeked out and it was and it does the movie has that sort of big trouble in little china vibe to it you know he remind you know the character of Cage in this, he reminded me of Jack Burton, but, you know, he has his Van Damme elements. Uh, a really retro film, man. Great soundtrack, great animation style as well. The colours were amazing as well. And we we talked about the art style, which was really good as well. I'm, I'm a fan of artwork, so it's always great to see great animation as well. And, you know, just putting the story together, you know, how do you respect what's already come? 
how do you respect that? So wh- where do you go from there, basically? Uh, respecting what you've got and giving something fresh to it as well, uh, which was amazing. So that's Jeremy Adams. Shout out to you, dude. We had a great conversation. I'm so sorry that the recording didn't come out right, but I'm hoping to geek out with you another time. You know, my guy's following us on social media, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so shout out to Jeremy Adams for for jumping on that. I'm going to put the clips up. They're already up on there. I've put director. I should put down producer. So the next clips that I do put up will have producer Rick Morales. Uh, again, uh, going into it, we, we spoke about uh, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, uh, legendary comedian, uh, voice actor as well. Uh, and he plays this really cool. Well, actually not cool. Very sarca- sarcastic swearing agent and uh, he just drops f-bombs but you know as soon as you hear that voice so he played uh i go it's not i go uh yego in uh, aladdin the parrot mm. uh and he's been in problem child he's been in loads of comedies but that voice is so distinctive uh hearing his voice like you know it, it made me made me smile and laugh because He's a great voice actor, bro, and he he knows how to bring himself into his element. Uh, and the character that he was playing in that was really good. So, you know, speaking to the producer, Rick, and just how what was it like working with the late, great Gilbert uh, Gottfried? That must have been an amazing experience. And I've got that footage up already on the channel, guys. You could check it out. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the full interview with producer Rick Morales up on the channel. Hopefully I get that up by this week sometime so you guys can check it out so make sure you keep an eye on the page so yeah that was an amazing experience bro so like the great opportunity to be able to speak with the creators of you know something like this you know here's Mortal Kombat which is going on you know 30 years on with with and the new game coming out recently as well so it's just amazing and you now that they've got you know you've got Jean-Claude Van Damme in there there's some really cool easter eggs in there as well so if you get the chance it's a good fun watch bro Definitely one to check out. Definitely. I'm I'm watching it now. Check out the gaming channel. Ashraf is playing the game. He's got it at home. Check that out. Uh, Ashraf done a recent reaction of Omni Man, who's introducing that, which is looks crazy as well. So do keep an eye on the gaming channel if you want to see the gameplay and all that sort of stuff. It's pretty awesome. Hey, I'm glad you had that opportunity. And, and in regards to uh, Jeff, Jeff, Geoffrey, how do I say his name? Sorry. Um, no, Jeremy Adams. No, the uh, the comedian, the voice actor. Oh, Gilbert Gil, uh, Gottfried. Gilbert, Gilbert yeah. Gottfried, yeah. The last thing I saw on him was he was on Joe Rogan's podcast before he passed away. It was great. If you have a chance, do watch that. Uh, it's great to get to know him a bit more through, through, through that. Uh, that's awesome, Kibbs. I'm glad you had that opportunity. The other main op- great opportunity you had you spoke of earlier, you had, you had a face-to-face and our first one, or your first one, um, interview with with the director for Teenage Mutant, Min- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and I always thought the director was Seth Rogen. <laughs> Obviously, I was wrong. No, he's <laughs> he a was... producer and writer as well on that. So okay. yeah, uh, so yeah, no, I had the so Jeff Rowe, uh, massive massive shout out to the guys at Paramount UK. The UK release is happening, I think, in the next week or two. So I'm waiting before I can share the footage. Uh, but yeah, guys, man, uh, I got to interview Jeff Rowe uh, and. You know, he did uh, The Mitchells versus The Robots. That was his first movie. This is his second movie going into it. But he's an artist, man. Like, you know, a director that fully loves what he does and really geeked out me. I was nervous, bro. I'm not going to lie. I was I was really nervous. So, guys, that footage is going to come out very soon. Uh, we'll have snippets of it on the podcast, but I'll have uh, videos. I'll have the full interview as a video, but I'll have little clips on our social media pages so you can check it out. But... Bro, talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, being in that element, making sure, you know, you're asking the right questions. You don't get nervous. You don't stutter. No, it, it was it was a great experience. I think I, I got nervous because it's the first time. I know I'll get used to it more often. But, you know, we spoke about the art style. We talk, talked about the cast. We talked about Jackie Chan. Uh, we we He did even a little, draw, excuse me, a little drawing for us, actually. I can show you. So I did a little thing called the, like the art challenge. Uh, so you were fully control over the interview. Like, was there things that they they kind of gave you like bullet points to say, you know, bring this up or don't bring that up, or, or was you full? No, full nothing. Out? I had full. I had full reign, so I could talk about loads of stuff. So I, I wrote all my questions down. Sneak peek. I uh, wrote all my questions down, and you know, he he talked about art style and you know what it, how he wanted it to look like when it comes to thinking about a teenager drawing and that's how he did it 
you know, that's how they did it. It looked like a teenager was drawing. It was quite messy, but it, it spoke loud words. But uh, I did this art challenge with him. So I asked him questions about the movie, cast, stuff like that. I did a trivia as well, guys, which is quite hilarious. So I I, I had like five questions uh, with one word answers that he had to go through. And he um, I think he messed up on one of them. Was it, uh, all turtles it was quite related? funny. Turtles related? It was all turtles. Yeah, yeah, turtles. Okay. No, no, turtles related. Okay. Uh, we spoke about direction and how he brings a unique style to the industry. Uh, you know, we spoke about John Woo as well and action and stuff like that, which is quite interesting. But I did this art challenge where he draws a picture of one of the turtles' faces. This one's Michelangelo, uh, where he doesn't lift the pen off the page. He does it in one go. I think he practiced because I told him beforehand. He did that really. <laughs> he did it in one go. Bless him. Uh, I did go over on the interview time, but luckily he was so nice that uh, we just chilled and, and, and finished up all the questions properly. And I, I was it was a great moment, bro. Like, once, for once, us, it's a great moment. Yeah, no, it's a big milestone for the Brothers Geek Out podcast. What, mm. I was going to ask you, once you started, did the nerves go or did it still take a bit of time or was the nerves gone before? Like, how, how obviously, you had your routine of controlling the nerves of meditation, the press-ups and whatnot. I do yeah. that. I've got to get my adrenaline going. Uh, but once you got started, was it on a good flow of course during the interview you might have started. I still messed up I still yeah I still messed up like I, I I started off the conversation bro listen I was supposed to put the voice recorder on and I didn't even put that on so in between like lucky the cameras were rolling but in between I had to like press this and you know caught I caught most of it the beginning one was just an introduction what we do and the rest of it uh one of the cameras switched off so I had to get back up and put that back on but I had already had most of the questions answered it was a natural flow uh you kind of just get into it. I think the main thing is is respecting the person's space, respecting the type of questions you ask as well. Because some people can go off, go off, go off chart, and making sure I keep to the niche because it's the Brothers Geek Out podcast. The main thing is it's two guys geeking out. I mean, I was telling them how, uh, you know how, you know, I think I saw the movie three times in cinema, and you know, I took I took Idris the first time, didn't I? Mm. And you know, just telling him how much he enjoyed it because you. This is the, his introduction to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and how much he enjoyed it. But as a adult who loved everything from the eighties and nineties, you know, same thing. That respect that he put into it, and they did as well, like with Seth and everybody. It made me fall in love with it because you draw me with the soundtrack, the cast, but then the animation is sick, bros. Like, you know, it looks stunning to look at. I was telling him, like, if I could have the space, I'd print each frame, put them up on the wall. New York City looked amazing, you know what I mean? But the one thing we geeked out about was Jackie Chan, you know. What was that like working with him? And, you know, because I I personally think this is probably one of Jackie Chan's best roles. I don't know. Like, I feel like he got more to shine on this. I absolutely love that character of Splinter, but they, they did a little flip on it. You know, he was the overpowering, overprotective dad, but yet he was funny as well. So he connected very well. Uh, you know, he said he was, you know, in his element and he went for it. And I even talked about like how the cast were on it as well. And, you know, what's it like when you've got so many personalities in one room or different situations where you have to take control and say, oh, okay, okay, take it easy. Stop, stop, stop. So great interview, guys. Make sure you check it out. It'll be up on the channel very soon. I'll keep you posted on social media, but yeah. Great opportunity, bro. Uh, proper proper Amazing. geek out moment for me. I can't wait to watch Which it. Which followed I, I, with I, loads of I, vomiting I, after. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank God you didn't vomit during or on him because <laughs> that would have been basic. Uh, that would have been like, that would have been uh, uh, the April O'Neil moment. Oh, shit, for real. Yeah, yeah, that would have been the April O'Neil moment. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, bro, I'm super happy for you, super pumped. I'm glad that we're getting these opportunities. It's absolutely amazing. And again, this is just a true testament of our hard work. And when I mean hard work, I mean sitting here right now and talking, which people might think is just talking, but you know what? The timing, I always say this, the timing. Oh, are you free now? No, I'm not free. i got to come back here. I'm like, kill Kips. i got to go training in a bit. Like, There's hard work. And then after this, just editing and all that sort of stuff. Like, and But the most important thing is a commitment, you know, consistent. Yeah the discipline to stay consistent the discipline to note down all the news and whatnot uh that that's all a part of this as well and it's a true testament to that this is this is one step another new milestone you know meeting the rock was another yeah yeah of course bro yeah another milestone that we've hit and we're gonna carry on doing it man you know what i'm trying to say so 
let's let's carry on. That was amazing, man. I'm glad to uh, I'm glad that I, you had the opportunity, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, seeing that. No, thank you, bro. Thank you. I'm I'm well chuffed as well, man. It's just funny how. Yeah, no, you've got to jump at what you can. And listen, bro, I wasn't feeling the greatest yesterday. And with everything going on at home and work, I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, will I be all right? So, you know, blessings and, and my prayers got answered as well. So, you know, Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. Yep, Alhamdulillah. That's the word, bro. Cool. Mm. All right. Well, let, let, listen, let's go into more stuff. Stuff we watch. There's loads of stuff I picked up. We'll quickly make things everything else brief, but Loki, mm. episode two, what was your thoughts? Episode three comes out this week. What's your thoughts on episode two? What's your thoughts on the show so far? I've heard Very good. rumors that that it's I heard rumors that it's doing well and then not doing well. So I don't know. Like, what's your thoughts on that anyway? To be honest, bro, I don't care what other people think and what the mainstream media think. I think it's awesome. I'm really enjoying it. Uh I feel like it's got a bit more oomph to it if that makes sense the visuals look good we've got characters that we can we like and connect with bro key key who kwan is absolutely amazing such a charismatic his presence on that show has really changed my perception on how the first season was like i love the first season i think that was a great introduction to the multiverse saga and where they're going now because he gives that he gives that i don't know man he Yes, I'm a fan. I'm an a fanboy. But I think he really, he really loves what he does, bro. And you can see it in his performance. Uh, he must have been geeking out every time he was there, bro. But I think he plays a key role in this as well. Uh, I think uh, Kang is much more of a threat on what's happening. Uh, Loki's journey into, you know, being very fearful, but trying to do good as well. And like, you know, he's in a situation now where his variant has caused this. How how do you how do you resolve it? And and you can feel the pain, you know, what the TV are going through, you know. They know now the truth and they were closing all those timelines and spoilers, guys, like if you haven't seen it, but you could tell it was really hurting them because they were like, That's people's lives. There's people. We're we're kid it's, it's it was deep, bro. I enjoyed it. I had a good fun time with it, definitely. Yeah, I'm 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 enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I mean the first one was super exciting because it was the introduction of Kang. Uh, he yeah. who remains and whatnot and it was just super exciting leading up to that this one's again it's, it's exciting leading up to it showing the threat the threat of Kang my only thing was I thought we would have seen him by now because I thought he would be in a lot more involved with two episodes in I would love to see Kang involved in this I mean look they, I, I've been reading loads of stuff about the MCU we're going to talk about it in a bit but how they have um uh what you call it um Look at the change things with the TV shows. Look at to have better storytell uh, storytelling and uh, runners or whatever you call it, showrunners. Yeah. Um, so they look at the change of how how they do all these TV shows and whatnot because they're just not being great, really, basically. Yeah. Um, but I like I said with this one, I thought Lo um Kang will be will be involved already, and I'd love to see more because I need they need to build him up. I mean, with Ant Man again, I was reading loads of stuff, and it's coming back to that as well. Like the the, the producers and whatnot generally thought Ant Man was good, and they were surprised that they got bad reception. You know, I read mm. something that Michael Douglas said, yeah, he'll be in Ant Man four as long as he can die. Like in the sense that you know they kill off his character and everything. Like yeah, people, you know, and 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 I agree. I really enjoyed Ant Man until at the end where I was just a bit critical. I was like. Oh man, this was Kang the Conqueror and he died by ants. I mean, fuck, if he's a bigger threat than Thanos, then you should have set a bunch of ants on Thanos and got that shit over and done with. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so that was my biggest criticism about that. I think they could have done better there. I reckon, I think that Kang, in my opinion, my, that Kang should have escaped, for example. Um, mm -hmm. and, and became the main conqueror. Anyway, this whole much, look, we're getting, let's, well, I guess we should get straight into it, man. I've read that they've confirmed that, and hopefully it's not fake news, or maybe it is, that they're going to reboot, or do a soft reboot uh, for the whole MCU after the whole Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars and all that sort of stuff. Um, looking to get back some of the old characters for that for that Avengers movie and then do a soft reboot, which means change characters and all that sort of stuff. And this will be the universe with the X-Men and, and Avengers and everyone is in one universe. Now, if they do it right, why not? It's amazing. Um, it's, and maybe did they add this strategy in because things are not working out too good right now just because things are 
not great if in that sense. I mean, I'm always watching them. I'm always the first guy in the cinema, but I do come out feeling, no, oh, I'm not excited about that. Or, you know, I don't geek out as much. Like, bro, before when the, when, the, when the Disney Plus show came, bro, I would stop the world to be like, fuck it, I'm fucking Disney Plus time now. Now I can wait a day. I've got patience to wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they've taken that excitement away. But I like where this show's going. I, I really enjoy uh, Loki's character. Morbius uh, is just... Yeah, Morbius is wicked, bro. So charming. It's, it's just so funny, good. man. It's, oh, yeah. it's just so good on screen. Um yeah, I hope we see Kang. I really want to see Kang, bro. I have to be honest with you. That's who I'm excited to see. I want to see this threat. Uh, and I hope they give us more of him. But yeah, no, looking forward to uh, to seeing more of this. And I loved, I loved, um, there was that scene where they were having the pie. And I think, I can't remember exactly what it was, but Loki brought up a situation where he, you know, the Avengers, the first Avengers, and he was like, you know, I, I, I called in an army and I tried to kill New York City, but I've changed now. Like, I'm paraphrasing the whole scene, but whatnot. Yeah. If you just remember that, that was pretty full cool callback to Avengers 1 and how he's changed as a person and whatnot. I think, um, you know, that was pretty cool. So, yeah, enjoying the show. Uh, pretty awesome. Looking forward to episode three. Moving on to i should have carried on with the the Marvel <clears throat> theme but anyway look moving on to lupin season three i don't think you've watched any of that show that is a really good show man if you like okay a show that has some craftiness to it that has something that you're always thinking that always ends with like oh that was a great plan and there was just like yeah almost like oceans 11 type of thing but just on a on a, on a show basis and how smart this individual is this this lupin character who's like a almost like a robin hood type of character but just the I, what i love about the show like the character is very charming and, and and everything about it but just to see all the tricks and and everything he was fi- to think to get, to put this plan together uh, and to see how the plan worked out it's just it's just so cool. It's just a really cool show. Um, but yeah, no, Lupin season three. If you had a chance to watch it, check it out. I really enjoyed it. And if you love to see like trickery and and just different, how do I pull it, man? I like um just seeing plans unfold. You know that whole A team? I love it when a plan comes together. It's like yeah, that, yeah. but to see the plan unfold after they've accomplish the plan that's when you can appreciate that i love it when a plan comes together because you can see how it came together it's pretty damn awesome and i love the way they did that in in lupin uh, uh and in almost every episode of expressing that so that was pretty cool all right Ooh, moving on moving on this i should have said this 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 one first actually or second actually um and with an interview with bbc michael kane has revealed that he's retiring from acting uh you know, he's hit 90 years old, fucking legend. Uh, and he said something in the lines of, you don't you don't have leading men at 90. You're going to have young, handsome boys and girls and whatnot. So I thought it might as well leave with all with all of this. So uh, at 90 years old, he, you know, he's, he's retiring from acting and he gives a lot of credit towards, you know, The Great Escape, uh, The Dark Knight, Interstellar and, and, and so much more. That Michael Caine is done. I mean, bloody hell, he's 90 years old, he's still doing the damn thing. But the fact that he's retiring, I mean, it's another legend. You know what I mean? It's another legend. And um, we get, we, you know, we've seen some killer performances and it, it's just amazing career. Amazing career from that. Good man. on him, man. Good on him. Uh, you know, lucky enough, I got to meet him a good couple of years ago. And, oh, in Jessup. Uh, right? It was, uh, yeah, in Jessup, yeah. <laughs> Very cool guy, man. I was nervous, bro. And I was selling him a camera. He was buying it for his daughter. Uh, sorry, his granddaughter. And no, nah, I mean, listen, man, workload, man. Look at this guy, persistent. 90 years old and still doing it. I respect that, bro. I absolutely respect that. So good on him. Get some chill time in, dude. Uh, and enjoy. Enjoy. Good on him. Good on him. Happy retirements. Happy retirements, my bro. Okay, look, going back to the Marvel news, because there's been a lot. There's been a lot. So we'll <clears> go through this. Uh, an official new casting list for Daredevil Born, a- Born Again has listed John Bethnal, this is my good news actually, as the third person uh, on the list, suggesting that the Punisher has a larger place in the series. Bro, that's the best news for me, right? He <laughs> He's an amazing Punisher. I love the Punisher, as you can see all over. The fact that he's just not a cameo is 
It's music to my ears, bro. I love that. So I I'm look I hope he's a big character. He's number three on the cast list, which shows that he's a big, he's gonna be a big character in it. Can't wait. On that show though, there's been a lot of uh, other things that the writers have been uh fired and the directors or whatnot, because yeah, apparently yeah. I read that I think Kevin Feige and the team saw the show and they were like, This is nothing like the Netflix show. Why are you changing this whole thing? Apparently that's the case. So they got rid of wow. it because they want to align it more to what how the Netflix show was. Because Marvel's moving into that R-rated scene with some of these shows mm. and and Werewolf by Night with the violence and stuff like that. So they didn't want to make it because the problem with, with this show and everyone's concern was if you made it like the she hoax and whatnot, you're going to just fuck it up. But if you make it like what was successful, which was the Netflix shows, then you're going to, you've got a great show ahead of you. Like you've got something yeah, like yeah, of course. fans can look forward it's to. It's something gritty, isn't it? It's something that they look forward to, definitely. Definitely, man. So look, man, it's a shame that people got fired and whatnot. I wish they was able to kind of redirect them or direct them in the right direction. But I guess sometimes you just need someone else who could do the job and and, and, and visualize the vision that you're going through for, which is, you know, the Netflix style of, of that show. So, you know, I can't wait. Apparently season one is in the beginning of 2025. So I've got a long way to go for me. Uh, and then this, I think they're doing a two part season and then the second season will be at the beginning of 2026. Again, well, I hope they do it well, uh, and I'm happy that the punish is a big part of it. Um, okay, more Marvel stuff. Lady Deathstrike will appear in Deadpool three, so yeah, cool. more, ca- more characters. Good. I know there. that's back. That's back in production, so definitely. Yeah. I know the writers striking everything, so we're ending. Um, people are, you know, getting respect and getting the money they deserve, and you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely happy about that. Definitely. I think that was delayed. I think it was supposed to come out in March, now it's coming out in May. So I think there's still some delays here and there. But anyway, she'll be back in that. Blade will... Okay, so Blade will be partly set in the 1920s and partly in the present day of the MCU. The movie will have a gritty, mature tone to it. So that's oh. what I heard about Blade. There's been a lot of back and forth for Blade, new directors, writers. Mm. There's a lot of back and forth. So hopefully they get that one right. Um, da, 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 what else we got here? Okay, so the Reign of Marvel Studios is confirmed. Secret, so what I was talking about earlier, Secret Wars apparently will be a soft launch of the reboot. Past characters might be coming back, uh, and they look at the reboot. People like, I think, like T'Challa, Tony, mm-hmm. Steve, Natasha, them guys, some actors, uh, in the reboot. Uh, wow. And this universe will include Sony Spider Man universe, will officially be part of the MCU canon as well. The Avengers, X Men, Fantastic Four, Spider Man, all of these defenders, Inhumans, all to be coexisting in this one universe. So I think they're just kind of using this to get them all in one universe rather than, you know, the multiverse and people coming in and here and there and whatnot. So looking to get them in. So, I mean, that's exciting if they can make it happen. So that's pretty awesome. Always is, bro. Always is. It's uh, be interesting to see where they go with it, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Okay, cool. That was all the Marvel stuff, to be honest with you. So exciting stuff to come. I'm still going to watch it. I know things have not been as great, but I'm always in. I'm, I'm invested for life. So you got me. Always, always, I might always, wait always. a day or two uh, these days. <laughs> uh, all right, well, hey, well, check this one out. The studios... So Robin Williams, the great Robin Williams, will be back as the genie from Aladdin. And his real voice, not AI... Apparently yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uncut, un, un, directors cut scenes of his voice of, of scenes that he done from back then, and they're going to be using that to do a little short video or short clip. Oh, uh, it'd be a oh, nice little tribute, it. man. Definitely. Yeah, as long as his family gave the approval and whatnot, that'd be amazing because he was an amazing uh, genie, and Robin Williams was one of the greatest when it came to voice voice acting uh, and whatnot. And a no, amazing, and really, really, yeah, great, great to hear that. Definitely great to hear that. Much respect. Yep. Much respect. Okay, cool. Uh, David Ayala, Ayala, excuse my, excuse me again. Uh, will star and produce the Disney Plus Rocketeer film, which will boom. We just hired new writers Eugene Ash Ashy. Rocketeer, yeah, no, bro, bro. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, bro, Rocketeer. We were talking about that. I was talking about that with somebody else recently. So, bro, I love that movie, bro. Uh, as as long as. You respect it and give us something fresh. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, bro. It's a great character, uh, visually stunning, great soundtrack. I love that movie, bro. Absolutely love that. And the comic books as well. I love the comic books. It's, it's the, the pure source material, you know what I mean? So definitely looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, me too. Me too. Great show. Uh, the original Iron Man. Nah, not original Iron Man, sorry. But like on screen, 
flying Iron Man <laughs> or whatnot. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm right, moving off from the Marvel and the DC stuff, moving into the DC, sorry, Marvel and Disney stuff, moving on to the DC universe. Breaking news, Jason Momoa is reportedly out as Aquaman, but he will be playing Lobo for DC. Which yeah, I I thought, I'm, sure, I'm sure that better. was going to happen anyway. I yeah, think definitely, that's much better for definitely. him. Definitely. Yeah, no, I think he's going to be good as the character. I think he's always had the look for it. Uh, I know James Gunn has probably thought, you know what, this is a guy who's going to be perfect for this role. So, yeah, no, it'd be interesting to see what they do, bro. Definitely. I, I mean, I've enjoyed all their stuff anyway, bro. You know, yes, it's not been great, but I've enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I still geek out. These are still comic book characters coming from a a, a page on the big screen. So I'm happy to see that they're still doing it and moving on. And I want to see good things, bro. I, I want some I want some success, more better success for them. Definitely, definitely. Well, on that, I mean, look, I think Lobo would be great. I haven't I don't read much Lobo stuff at all, so I can't really comment. I know he's like a bounty hunter out in space and cyber and whatnot. Yeah. But I feel like and again, this is based on not reading the comics. So someone who is a Lobo fan and enthusiast, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The acting from um, him, him, I think looks-wise, would be perfect. Obviously, with makeup and all the other sort of shit and his size and everything. But I feel like his acting from Fast and Furious 9, 9, that psychotic mental acting, which I didn't really enjoy from that movie in personal opinion, but that will suit Lobo. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't it know. Will. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not no, a Lobo expert. It will. It will. It will. We'll have to wait and see what they do, bro. Definitely. Definitely. On that note, Warner Brothers, so again, this has come up, that there's a possibility that they might be selling Warner Brothers pictures to like be Universal or someone like that. Now, I heard about this. Yeah, so now if that's true and it happens, there's a lot of things that will James Gunn still get to do his vision or this responsibility that's being given because they might just change the complete strategy and be like, no, no, we're going to start again. Uh, we're going to get Henry Cavill back or some bullshit like that and start controversy again. Um, but if that happens, there could be some changes from studios and the people above. And, you know, this whole thing with James Gunn might go to then, or maybe not, maybe not. But you never know. Um, but there's rumours that they one above is a look at her or could be sold. So we'll see what we'll happens. We'll have to wait there. and see, bro. Let's see what happens there, bro. Yep. Let's Talk about happens. Mr. Henry Cavill. Uh, apparently it's official that he will be making a Warhammer Seek cinematic universe and yes. he's a gamer. I know he's been talking about it. Yeah, he's a gamer. So yeah, definitely. I know he's been working on that for a while now. So yeah, it'd be interesting. Good for him. He's a gamer. He loves mm. that to for him to be a part of a gaming universe. Perfect. I think there's been some things about him playing the character from Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. I doubt mm. he'll say no to none of that stuff because he's a gaming fan. It, mm. he'll love that. But if he's doing this, amazing. Uh he deserves it. No, definitely. Definitely. It'll be, let's see where he heads with it, definitely. Cool. Uh, I mentioned this one before, I think, man. A reboot, the Ruby rebooting the Gargoyles into a live action series. I mentioned that before. Yeah, we spoke, yeah, we've yeah. we've spoken about that before, yeah, definitely. And I think did I say Ryan Reynolds was a part of that? It was Ryan Reynolds, right? If I remember correctly. I think so. Anyway. It'd be interesting to see a live version. So yeah. I remember the cartoon. So yeah, definitely be interesting to see what they do. All right, finishing off with some more news. Um, all right. Director Michael Mann has confirmed that his next feature will be Heat 2, which Heat 1 is a big one to, to fill, like big one, big big shoes to fill. I mean, when I say shoes to fill, to, to make a part two, at least it's still Michael Mann. Um, but how do you compete with the first one? Because that was so great at that time. But I mean, if anyone could do it, it can hit. It, it has to be him, I guess. I think they should leave it, bro. They should leave that too. Yes, I agree. Yeah, they should leave it. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, d- 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 We'll see what happens with that one, I guess. We'll wait and see. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they get De Niro and Al Pacino back. But I mean, Al Pacino's so old now. And both of them are actually, but... They're old, but <laughs> let's see what happens. But yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, anime news. Anime, anime, anime. Uh, A brand new Dragon Ball series is coming out. Dragon Ball Damn. Diama has... Uh, Diama? Dia- Daima? has been confirmed and will debut on 4, 2024. Um, the creator, Akira Tayu- Toriyama, confirmed in an interview. Um, uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm reading something completely different. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 him, who's going to be involved in, which everyone's excited about because he's, he's free. But he also mentioned that 
in an interview that he if he had not seen Drunken Master, Jackie Chan's Drunken Master in 1978, he would never have come up with the idea of Dragon Ball. Uh, he was a big fan mm. of martial art films and Jackie Chan. Um, he mentioned in 2023, Jackie Chan would have been a perfect candidate to play Goku. So in 2013, he said Jackie Chan would have been a perfect candidate to play Goku. I don't know about that, but uh, no, like not actually, Jackie Chan himself, who is a fan of anime and also started the uh, stated that he would have liked to participate in a real action adaptation. I don't know about Jackie playing Goku, to be honest with you, but the 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 um, Akira, who I think assess, I guess founded Dragon Ball or, or kind of created it, was a big fan of Jackie Chan, and the influence of Drunken Master was what created Dragon Ball. And Drag- I love Dragon Ball to bits. I <clears throat> don't know how this new season can be, but with him a part of it, it you know, fans are excited because you know that's the, the original guy. So, Dragon Ball, um, cool. Other reboots, man. Apparently, they looks to reboot Kick Ass, uh, and Kingsman 3, um, with the, the writer apparently Matthew Van, uh, Val, Val, Vanguard, yeah, look at the reboot, Matthew Vaughn, Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn, yeah, yeah, Matthew Vaughn. Uh, kick ass i mean kingsman i didn't watch to be honest with you kick ass i I really fucking love those man so uh, you know i don't know about a reboot but if you can make them as good as them then why not because i enjoyed those um it's a hard one to to reboot that when it's so still kind of fresh i feel like it was only made like 10 years ago but it's not it's probably longer but no let's see what happens bro reboots and stuff and i think it's time for just some originality some new characters and stuff like that oh not unless it's been 40, 50 years to reboot it, you know what I mean? But we mm. live in a different time and era now, so it'd be interesting to see yeah. where they head with it. Well, I mean, the thing is, with kick I'm not fixed on... What's my brother's name who played kick What's his name again? Aaron. He's playing Craven. Yeah. The English well, actor. I've got yeah. a proper blank here. Anyway, I'm not fixed... Aaron Taylor that... Johnson. Aaron Taylor, yeah. I'm not fixated that he has to be kick ass. Like that original one was no, no, so no, good. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And whatnot. So I'm not so if they change that and whatnot, I wouldn't be like, oh, it has to be Aaron. It's like, you know what? I'm not, you know, I'm not in a position where I feel like he has to be. So if they reboot it, do a different story, all that sort of stuff, it'd be pretty awesome. But I did love that one. That one was awesome, the original one. Um, so keep that same sort of vibe, I guess, and you'd be all right. Um, all right, quickly finishing off. He Man will be back on Netflix. Uh, January twenty fifth. Cool. Uh, so do the 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 animation which involves um, Kevin, Kevin Smith. Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Halloween movie is getting a TV reboot with Miramax. I mean, if you're a fan of those horror movies, I'm I'm not to be honest with you. But if you are fans, they're obviously successful if they keep carrying this shit on. So uh, mm. if you're a fan of that stuff, it's a TV reboot on Miramax. Zack Snyder asked. Rick and Morty's creator, is there any way I can help to get the movie started by using Snyderless? I mean, Rick and Morty, have you ever seen any of the shows? I've, I've seen a couple episodes, but I've, I, didn't got, I didn't get into it to invest my time in it. I mean, it's bloody hilarious. No, um, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, but if, if, if Snyderverse can get involved, that'd be great, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, Snyderverse or Snyderness. I Sorry, guess, Snyder- is, Snyderness. Yeah, Snyderness. Artistic. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting for him to do a comedy like that with his vision. Um, oh, yeah, of course. It'd be epic, bro. He's, he's, he's a great visual type of person. So definitely. As one guy, I'd love to interview. Definitely, definitely. Uh, he'll be awesome. And I always, we've said it, Snyder verse, sorry, Snyder to do Fist of the North Star. We've always said that. Come on, Snyder. Come on, get on um, it. All right, last but not least news on a video game. A recent town hall meeting with Activision's Blizzard employees, CEO Bob Kinnott, Kin, no, Kotick, Discuss potential opportunities provided by Microsoft upcoming acquisition and including the re-emergence of Guitar Hero. Do you remember that? Mm, you remember okay. That? Oh, yeah. I, I love Guitar Hero. Me and Dwayne and you used to have jokes on that, bro. I get, that game was fun. That game was really fun. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Reboot of that, man. And talk about games. Ashraf playing the new Assassin's Creed Mirage. Do check that out. Mm. It looks beautiful. I would not get into it. I don't have the patience for that one, but it looks Beautiful, check it out. Check out the gaming channel. Footage is up there. He's playing more combat. I'm playing Gears or God of War, really getting into God of War. Um, but that channel's there. And that is 
all the news that we had for this week. There was a lot of shit to discuss. Yeah, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot. Um, yeah, I've still got a f- few things to add on there, bro. Uh, listen, guys, make sure you check out the Twitter giveaway, X giveaway, giving away a copy of Mortal Kombat Legends Cage Match, guys. So lucky one of you lucky winners can can win a copy UK only UK only I've got to mention that uh I got to go to the summer hood uh, some other hood premiere with Jakub Davide which was absolutely brilliant we need more movies like this shout out to Adam Deacon for his first directorial de- debut the movie is hilarious bro I haven't laughed like that in ages and to have Jakub there with me which was amazing I know he's been going through quite a lot with his leg and stuff and hearing him laugh you know was brilliant bro absolutely fun if you guys uh love british urban comedies this is one to definitely watch if you enjoyed another hood you're gonna love some other hood uh bro we came out laughing we were still laughing on the train journey home bro so i love that vibe because it's the vibe we grew up with it's the language we know uh uh there's some epic funny moments in it a really high energy type of movie like you come out of the cinema buzzing bro so bro absolutely loved it so it's out in cinemas now make sure you check that out Finished off season four of uh, Top Boy, bro. Jamie, yeah. I, I, I mean, I need to. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna start the. No, that's all right because it's still a hit. Yeah. Because you do like the character of what he's trying to do and the shit he's got himself into. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I I mean, when we start the next uh, season, we'll we'll find out what it causes and what happens and. It's a bit slow at the beginning, but then it ramps up towards the end. But that that's a massive cliffhanger, bro. Mm. Massive cliffhanger. And you met, but yeah, you met that dude who was really good in the what's his name? Sorry, in the in the character, the film. Um, in who was that good dude, man? The, oh, the... Milurin. Milurin, yes. Yeah, yeah, Milurin, yeah. Milurin. Let me find that. Let, let's let's pay respect to this guy. I, I really he was. He, was, he played that. the the scouser, isn't it, from Liverpool? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I used to love the way he used to when he used to talk to someone. He used to say their full name. Like there was something yeah. about that that just seemed intimidating. The way he would just pronounce their full name as he spoke to me. I found him very intimidating. I thought he was very good. Uh very what's it? Uh let me see. Top by uh season four. Uh let me let me pay some respect to this guy because uh oh a mash up. Uh So I met uh, this actor a couple of years, again, when I was working in Jessup's, uh, and he was in a TV program, BBC, called uh, The Three Musketeers, if I'm right, yeah, The Musketeers. Uh, where is he? Where is he? I didn't even realize Ashley Waters was in that as well. Come on, man! How did I not got his face here, man? But that's deep. All right, it's going to be a mission to try and find that now. Uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, he's in. He's on the picture on IMDb. Let me see. Uh. Howard Charles, he play, he played Pathos. Pathos. Howard Charles, but okay. yeah, uh, he, you know, yeah. So, bro, Top Boy's good. So, we're looking forward to doing that. I watched the first episode of One Piece, uh, which I really enjoyed. I didn't realize I was going to enjoy it so much. I think Straw Hat plays a very charismatic, very positive, very has. A, I wish people could be like that more. Like you know, that's good energy. Like he's got yeah. good energy. That's what, and I love that. And and the comedic timing is really good as well. Which was which was really good. So I'm looking forward to watching the next episode. Oh man, with time is so hard. So I'm watching stuff on my phone, depending on journeys and stuff like that. Just downloading episodes so I can just catch up because I can't even watch normal TV at home. But to finish off the podcast, guys, massive thank you as always. Nothing but love. But listen, if you guys ain't seen the creator the creator yet, make sure you guys go watch it. It is absolutely amazing. Probably one of my favorite films this year. We've had a lot of films come out this year. We've had so much great films come out, but this top contender for my number one spot because of how yeah i mean spider-man across uh, uh across the spider-verse is amazing uh 
and I still think that's my number one movie this year. But the creator, bro, the story, the acting, the visuals, ah, it's the grand scale of it, bro. The reality of it, the realism of it, crazy, absolutely one to watch, bro. If you guys tomorrow, get a chance, check it out. Time, it's in yeah. cinema. Yeah, if I have check time, it out, I might check it out tomorrow. Cool. All right, cool, guys. I'm gonna leave it as that. I need to get back. I need to eat something. I'm feeling it a bit. But massive thank you, as always, for the support on the channels, guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Always a big influx in the stuff we've seen recently. Make sure you check out the interviews we've done with uh, Mortal Kombat legend, uh, producer and writer. And I'll have the interview up with Jeff Rowe for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. What a mouthful. All right, bro. Have a good one, bro. We'll catch up. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for liking, subscribing, all that good shit. We out. Peace. Peace.